What's up fans? Welcome to Extra Time TV. I'm Kevin Campbell. This is Andre Soclal. And in today's episode, we preview the upcoming game between Trinidad and Tobago and Mexico. Yes. We're at a rough at the center in Gasparilla Trinidad. Yes. And today, Andre, we look ahead to the game. It's a big game. Table topping Mexico take on Trinidad. Yeah. Can we defeat L3? Um, I, I don't know. It's going to be a tough game. I'm trying not to be all on defense about it. Yeah. Uh, realistically, uh, from what I've seen against the Panama game, it's going to be a tough task. You know, Mexico, you know, they were struggling, but now they seem to be back on track. Uh, that they defeated Costa Rica, which is no easy feat at all. Costa Rica is my favorite to top the entire hex. Um, so they're going to come in with their confidence really high. But history has shown that their form hasn't been great when they come to Trinidad, Trinidad and Tobago. So uh, my concern is that uh, we conceded a lot of space in the Panama game, um, the both wing back positions got stretched a lot. Carlos Edwards looked like he struggled a bit. Yeah. Um, oftentimes, the centre back had to cover him at many times. Uh, he was beaten for pace many times. I don't know if that's a plan where Dennis Lawrence told him to check his runs, but he got beaten on many occasions. And a, a more talented Mexico team could exploit that, create gaps. Uh, so I don't know if Dennis Lawrence's plan is to maybe concede you know, some, uh, maybe a withdraw in terms of the attacking sense, hold on to the ball and just take our chances. But I think we could probably catch them on the counter-attack and also maybe set pieces. We have been improving a bit in the set pieces. It's still not there yet. You could see that the, there's still a, a bunch of things that Dennis Lawrence has to work out. But uh, I think Dennis Lawrence's plan is to shut up shop and try to take our chances. So I, I'm optimistically hoping we could get a draw. But it, it, it is a tough game, and we, we need to win this game. Yeah. Andrew, my biggest fear is that the Mexican press our wingers um, back because Cato and Jovin Jones, if the Mexicans get on the ball and pass well, then our two attacking outlets can be pushed back, and we will be, and our entire dynamic actually yeah. will be changed. But, Andrew, Mexico, Mexico, Mexico. This team has been as stable as any Mexican team over the past years yeah. because Coach Osorio has had them purring like a Rolls Royce really yes. because stars from the past like Carlos Vela who were in and out he's in now he's settled he's focused so it's great um, they go to 4-3-3 they did, um, as shown against Costa Rica yeah. um, a trident with El Cepillo Peralta up front with Chicharito and um, also Carlos Vela yeah. supporting with Marquez and, and Herrera in the middle but Andre, it's a big game for Hernandez because if he scores against us on Tuesday, he becomes Mexico's number one all-time leading goal scorer, yep. trumping the great Jared Borghetti. Yes. If he does it, we'll see what happens. But at the back, Mexico, they are strong as well. Um, they have a couple of new guys in the middle, as well as um, Hector Moreno, yep. who is really experienced. It's going to be a tough game for us. Um, Andre, I remember that game two years ago at the Gold Cup where an enthralling 4-4 Remember that? Yes. You're it's emotional? Insane. Could never forget that game. Yeah. Uh, you know, they, it was 4-3, it was the crowd was throwing stuff at uh, Johansi, uh, the, at the guys taking the corners and then equalizer. And the thing is, uh, it, at that point in time, Trinidad was at an all-time high um, under Stephen Hart and so on. So, you know, I don't think it's going to be chaotic like that. I hope it's not. But um, I, I think we are more than capable of beating them. Uh, one of my biggest concern is that we can take it to players. When Stephen Hart was there, he changed that style of play. Uh, we have the capability to hurt that back four. Uh, we have very talented players that could take on players one-on-one. -on -one. But the problem is we don't finish. Uh, and we generally, I saw this in the Costa Rica game, we, we actually took it to Costa Rica at times. We didn't take our chances. We got more and more nervous as the game went along. And you know, Costa Rica being a very experienced team, they adapt. Um, they, one of our problems that I think we take too long to, in terms of game management, yeah. we take really long to adapt and teams are prepared. And in the game against Panama, we attacked yes in the beginning, we created some chances, but then we lost the midfield for long periods. They were non-existent, they were just passing around the ball and we scored against the run of play. Yeah. Now, I don't know if that's a plan of Dennis Lawrence. Mm -hmm. You know, we concede some possession and then attack the gaps. But one of my concerns as well, one of the many concerns is like concern number four, <laughs> is that we do counter-attack fast on the wings, but we yeah. seem to slow down and allow the back four to come back yeah. at times. And we make wrong decisions in the final third, and it's, we definitely going to have to sharpen things up. I don't know if Dennis Lawrence is going to go that way. Mm -hmm. um, so ideally, I think I like his approach. I've seen it with Ben Hacker when he took over. 
And I don't know if Dennis Lawrence is trying the same thing where, you know, keep possession on the ball, be defensively structured, yeah. and try to take your chances. But yeah. I think it's a dangerous game to play. I think that play in between the lines is going to be really important yeah. for um, Dennis Lawrence because I spoke to him in a press conference and he said that he wanted to bring in Botswana earlier, yeah. but just didn't. And I think that for the year against Mexico, we could be overawed in the channels. Mm -hmm. So if we can have players like Highland and George play in between the lines, as well as spring uh, maybe Botswain when he comes on earlier, then we can have a chance because Mexico, they pass the ball so well that we can get overawed. We can probably be pulled out of position. Yeah. So if that happens, it'll be, it'll be fantastic for us because it means that we have an outlet going forward. Yep. Those quick diagonal balls could be great for Botswain, or if Jones and Kato can get involved, yep. even better. So Andre, um, the game against Mexico on Tuesday, any final thoughts, any opinions that you think a fan should know? Uh, well, the thing is, uh, you know, record-wise, yeah. they don't have a great record against us, so there's oh. at home. So we have that going for us. Um, I always wondered why we never used two forwards. Ah. Um, it's something, a solution I always like. But I mean, these guys work with the players every day. They obviously, we see from a fan's perspective. You now, Kevin and I go to the sessions as well. We, we get to speak to the coaches. But they see what they see. They do their analysis. And one thing I noticed before I put my conclusion is that when Kenwin Jones comes off, he gets a lot of criticism, we know that. Yeah. But he still has the ability to pull defenders to one. He has that physical presence and when he comes off, you could actually see, I saw it in the USA game as well, that uh, the, the back four of the opposition team usually gets comfortable and they move forward. They take more risks. Actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they, they did it. I saw it against, uh, was it El Salvador? Nicaragua. Uh, uh, Nic uh, yeah, so what, what yeah, uh, we drew two all in that game. Uh, he has that ability. When Botswain came on and he ran his socks off, very nice shot, very yeah. enthusiastic player, but you could see there was a little bit more comfort mm. from the Panamanian back four and they started to move forward a little bit. So I think Kenwin Jones has to start and definitely keep that back four busy. But he, they, we have to take our chances. We will get chances, I'm sure of this. And we have to win our home games. Uh, we have to not concede. That is an area that we always get messed up with. Yeah. We concede way too early. I think Dennis Lawrence is working on that. Um, I was concerned about his set pieces. Uh, Panama did get some free headers at times. Yeah. Uh, Mexico has some good guys, good headers of the ball. So this is definitely going to be a proper test for Dennis Lawrence. Yeah. And I hope that the confidence on the Panama game comes through. I saw some weaknesses and I optimistically hope for a draw. Yeah. If they say we're going to get a draw now, I will take it. As a fan, of course, I want us to win. Mm -hmm. But I could see us getting maybe a, a, a nil-nil or maybe a 1-1 one -one with actually Mexico scoring first and us reacting. Of course, I hope I'm wrong. Yeah. So I hope we win. Same. I want to win as well, but I think a draw could be feasible yeah. in the grand scheme of things, actually. Yeah. So Andre, um, where can they find you? You can find me at Andre Suklal on Twitter and Instagram. You can find me at KevA68 on Twitter and Instagram. And don't forget to like our page, comment, subscribe. Because if you do, you win a chance. You can win a chance for more tickets yes, as well qualifiers. yeah as well as the possibility of winning a copy of fifa 17. yeah and the honor of playing me maybe yeah uh, and me too uh, yes. i'm not that good so yeah. <laughs> i guess i'll try yeah <laughs> but um that's it fans um stay tuned for more great episodes great shoots great on-site locations so stay tuned for more from extra time tv yes